60 minutes overtime. John, I mentioned about the White House calling. This week, I interviewed Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's the head of infectious diseases for the National Institutes of Health. He got three urgent calls during our interview. And I'm sorry. Including one from the White House. No, no th 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 this I have to. This. Who are you talking to? People in the administration in the White House who have, have bona fide scientific questions. Did it have to do something with when will it be safe for the president to go out I, there? I, I, don't, I don't reveal conversations I have with high-ranking <laughs> officials. Thank you. All right. Back in March, I interviewed him for 60 Minutes' very first piece about COVID-19. Dr. Fauci and others took a lot of flack for initially saying at the beginning of the pandemic, it's not necessary for the public to routinely wear face masks. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no. closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. But then there was new information that came along, and they changed their mind. And based on that new information, by April, they were saying, yes, wear face masks. I would recommend doing what the CDC, as I think appropriately and correctly said. It's, it's, it's an adjunct. It's an additional mm -hmm. way to help protect you and to have you help protect others. So let's see if we could put this to rest once and for all. It became clear that cloth coverings, things like this here, and not necessarily a surgical mask or an N95. Cloth coverings work. Now there's no longer a shortage of masks. Number two, meta-analysis studies show that contrary to what we thought, masks really do work in preventing infection. In science, it's, it's what we do. In medicine, it's what we do. We talk about what's the information that we know now. We try to explain that to people. If that changes, then we may have a new idea, a new way of interpreting the data, and a new way of putting it in perspective for people, and we communicate that. We're at a really tough point in this pandemic. I mean, we know it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, but where is that end? And people have COVID fatigue. I know I do. And we wanna know when can we take off the masks? How long do you think we will all be wearing masks? That's a good question. Uh, and in do humility and Modesty, I don't know the answer to that. I could answer it partially another way. If we get a vaccine, which I think we will, by the end of this year, the beginning of 2021, and it's 70% effective, and a substantial proportion of the people take the vaccine, and that's a big problem, how many people take the vaccine, and we get into the third or fourth quarter of 2021, I think the level of infection will be down enough that we still would have to do some public health measures. And that might include wearing a mask, but they will not be as stringent as they are right now. Then, as the months and year or more go by, it'll be less stringent and less stringent until you get to the point where the level of infection is so low, it's not an epidemic threat. And then I think we'll be fine. But it's not gonna be, I think, well into and towards the end of next year. At the end of the day, it's gonna be layers of protection. So washing your hands, wearing a mask, doing social distancing, avoiding crowds, outdoors is safer than indoors. And now we know also pay attention to ventilation. If you are indoors, open a window, crack a door. Plus, we hope that there are better treatments, therapeutics, plus we hope that there's a vaccine. All those things together eventually can decrease everybody's risks. One thing Dr. Fauci has been very consistent about is the need for more testing. He told me that back in March, and he told me that this past week. You can never have too much testing right now. Do you think we're where we need to be in terms of testing? We, I think we do need to do even more. I, I think, and, and it has something to do with public health, but it has also to do with the peace of mind of individuals who are living in the era of COVID-19. And by peace of mind, I say that I could go down to CVS and say, these tests are $2 a piece, Here's $200, I want 100 tests. This is the United States of America, technologically most advanced country in the world. We can make a test with a piece of paper that you stick into a little cassette for $1 that does it in five minutes, that's 98% sensitive. 
You can't tell me that we can't do that. One of the things that's happened, and you can understand it, is that people have been afraid to go to the doctor, afraid to go to the emergency room. And so we're seeing a decrease in screening for very important things like colonoscopies or mammography and other things that people need to have done at the, at the hospital or at their doctor's office. I think people should not be afraid of going in to a medical center, to their doctor's office, and, and, and seeing their health care provider. I think on their part, they need to make sure that if they have any symptoms or if they've had exposure to somebody who potentially was infectious, that they let their health care provider, let the office know about that. I know people are fatigued. There's that COVID fatigue that everybody, including me, has. It's not going to suddenly go back to normal. But if we want to head towards normal, we've got to follow the public health advice. It's as simple as that.